Welcome back everybody to Max's Garage Mahal. Here we are again fixing to do another electrical upgrade and that is to, and you've heard this mentioned many times, we're going to go ahead and install one of these 12 volt power sockets right here. See if I can get this out of here. You get an idea of what they look like out of them. When you're not installed in the dash of your car or your lawnmower or your, maybe your tractor and I hear that women love them sexy tractors so let's see what this looks like all right this is basically what it looks like got a little old positive down in there and then the side is metallic and the side being metallic goes to the negative side and the positive side is that little shiny metal right down in the center so the way this operates is you put 12 volt power maybe even 24 volt power to the, the red wire and then you ground this black wire to the frame or to the battery so you can go straight to the battery with the red or to the positive as well as the black to the ground on your battery this does include a fuse inline fuse, little one of these little glass SAE type fuses. I'm not a big fan of those things besides they're getting really hard to find in most cases. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to install one of these spade connectors here, female spade connectors, and we'll choose the appropriate size for this wire. And you there's several different kinds you can use. I mean you can purchase all different kinds of these. You can even put together your own protective coatings on a standard non-protected connector. There's all kinds of ways of doing this. I always like to use like this one right here and this one. They don't have a protection that goes all the way to the end like this one would right here or like this one does. So you want to make sure that whatever is around your hot circuits you've got a covering so I like to take a piece of shrink wrap and right over the end here where there's no covering I like to put enough of that to come down and then where my thumbnails at I like to bring it down to about there shrink it and then it's got a real good tight fit as well as some protection from being grounded out accidentally that's not a good thing it can cause maybe some sort of uh, health hazard to your lawnmower even to you so some of the tools you're going to need here uh, and another thing too always put your wires in a loom this one does have a protective coating over it as you can see that is going to go inside this plastic wire protector so it'll be doubly protected and have a nice smooth glide inside there so let's see we're going to use, oh, and another thing too, do you ever think you might need to remove the fender? You've seen me removing these fenders for doing service, for cleaning and such as that, and all kinds of modifications, upgrades. So I always like to make sure that anything I put on these mowers have a way to let you remove the fender without having to cut wires and such as that. So let's go look at this real quickly. I'm either going to use an XT connector here and you solder your wires on this end you cut your wires and you solder the other side of your wires to this end and this is what they look like taken apart those things will carry some amperage now I kid you not those things are absolutely there are hosses again you want to make sure when you do your wires that you take some shrink wrap and you put over the wire connections that are soldered so that they don't get shorted out so you've seen me do that on the and I can't lift the seat right now as you can see with all this stuff on here so you've seen me do that on the tail light connections so that they can be disconnected and I try to use a different one each time and I meant to bring my automotive connection box around here you can use those as well and I just um, I chose to use these this time because they're very recognizable to me I use them a lot in remote control airplanes and cars and things like that if I still played with those which I don't but I really need to, they're sort of relaxing, have a lot of fun with them. Uh, if you go to your battery 
and you want to before you start disconnect the positive side of your battery and mine happens to have quarter inch bolts so you'd need a 7 16 pair of 7 16 inch wrenches this is a ratchet wrench acts like a ratchet just stick your ratchet in on there and you can give her the dickets and come right off there um, another way to do this for these wires being disconnected in the middle is this is what is known as a bullet connector and these this is put together this would normally be covered in again shrink wrap so this is what they look like apart and the reason why they call it a bullet connector is the end of that thing looks like a bullet and it goes inside the female side male bullet side goes inside the female side and uh, you solder those wires in and you can disconnect the fenders like that so I'd prefer to have your wires connected in a pair so we're going to use the XT connectors now again some of the tools you're going to need is wire cutter these are wire cutters strippers and they also are crimpers so really the only tools we're going to need is pretty much right here on the machine already uh, these parts come out of here so that's just extra parts uh, we're going to need we're going to drill our hole with these step drills this is a monster step drill this is a little puppy one here and we're going to start the hole with this and take it up as far as it'll go and another thing you got to remember when you put these things in these things have a pair of slab sides on them or flat sides here that you can see and you want to make sure that you measure across from this flat side to this flat side which that happens to be one inch so we're going to drill a one inch hole and you ask well where are you going to locate we'll get to that here in a moment so we're going to drill a one inch hole and then you're going to finish rounding this out by hand but you're going to make sure that you measure this put a circle around that and then you stop it at these flats so that you don't oversize your hole if you oversize that hole uh, as you try and tighten this up you won't be able to hold it as easily it's not a necessity you can't oversize the hole I don't recommend it this also comes with a little rubber gasket to help seal this off I mean it's a lawnmower so it's going to get wet so no big deal anyway but I always like to install them as though I, they're going into an automobile or truck or something like that uh, let's see where am I going to locate it now I've shown you these circles before and I've pre-punched the center that I'm going to put this socket in. There's another one right up here. I <laughs> let a guy buy a couple of those things, so I've only got one in stock left. So I'm going to go ahead and install this one, and um, I'll come back and install the second one here. Um, this one really is not necessary because the likelihood of you using more than one power socket at a time is not likely. The reason why I'm going to do this most anything you're going to power is going to come off the rear of the machine however I probably will start building some mounts to go in front to carry your sprayers and then a and I'm going to, I'm going to give Mr. Doug Kramer some uh, credit for his ideals on the switch his pinky switch as he calls it so you can be running along here and you can pull your switch with your pinky and uh, there will be one of those things mounted on here I may or may not ever use that but at the same time this poor lawnmower is getting all kinds of things that aren't necessarily what I'll be using for but just demonstration purposes on how you can use them and how to install them so we're going to go back to this and show you we're going to go ahead and drill here we're going to put a one inch hole here and then we're going to come back and then make sure which it'll have a flat side here and a flat side here we'll drop that socket down in there after we come across and make this outside here and then let it slide right in there and it'll keep that from rotating then we'll show you how to do the rest of it we'll get the uh, seat up out of the way and we'll get the fenders out of the way things like that so you can see what's going on so let me get this set up on the tripod we'll get started we'll see if we can drill this while you watch and if anyone's going to screw it up in front of you, it's going to be me. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Alrighty, so old Max screwed up here. I started <laughs> drilling before I started filming. thought I was going, but it wasn't. So here we go. So I've drilled this far. Alright, 
let's measure that real quickly just for giggles and grins because we don't want to get too large enough here that we can't use the hole so right there we have almost seven eighths not quite one inch and I believe let's check this I believe this thing only goes up to like seven eighths so let's haha -ha, check that out now let's get a nice measurement on that since we've got a good straight wall cut and that gives us I'm right in your way aren't I okay let me get this over here I'm still anyway that is I don't think you really see that but that is seven eighths and we want a one inch so we're gonna go ahead and take the little pup out of here we're gonna grab big dog wait a minute this is a hustler all right so I'll get this straight yet we're gonna grab the hustler that's a hustler right there guys this is a big dog this is a hustler all right so let's get on with the program here now let's measure that and make sure that is not larger than one inch all we got to do is take that step all the way through and get a square edge on it and that'll be one inch we'll be in business Check that with my old fingertip here. Almost there. It's better to be safe than sorry, so we take our time. If you wonder what that white thing was it took off over to the floor on well down into the steering drives that is the uh, mount for the tachometer so uh, that's another video <laughs> we're not into that one yet and I'll be honest and all of my moving around and changing cabinets out and putting in shelving and doing some other things. I've mislaid that stinking tachometer, so I'll find it. We'll put it in. Alrighty. Y'all think that's going to be one inch? Let's take a look. Man, I tell you what, we better stop right there because that is one inch. So, let me get this over here and we want to move this out of the way temporarily get in the hustler bit and we want to take we want to open this up get this wiring harness opened up here let me see if we can get where you can see it and then once this is opened up and you know, normally, guys, if I wasn't doing this in front of you so that you could uh, move on with this video, I normally would save those uh, wire zip locks, zip ties, and that way I could reuse them. All right, we're going to go ahead and take this little rascal off right here, this uh, nut, and we're going to leave this on here for the time being. Take this nut all the way off. Because as you know, I explained earlier, we're going to be cutting these wires and putting some uh, new ends on there that allows me to disconnect without having to take any screws out. Here is that, um, here's the fuse link I mentioned earlier. And some of you new guys may have never seen one of these fuses. But that's what they look like, a little bit tiny thing, a little glass fuse. 
and uh, I think that's like a probably one and a half amp, two amp, three amp, something like that. So uh, this wire should be good for 15 amps. And to be honest with you, we'll probably put 10 amps on it at the most. We'll check all the machinery that we may run with this thing. We'll see that uh, whatever the amperage is. We'll probably put a load test on this wire and just see what the little sucker will take. And here's some of these uh, here's some of these ends as you can see that you can make up yourself this is really the cheapest way to go I don't particularly like these and if you're going to use them then I recommend that you put a a little bit of silicone in there to seal it off and then disconnect these put a little bit of dielectric grease in there to make a continual a great contact on there so that you don't lose or get any sort of moisture in there and that'll keep that good and tight um, so we're going to measure across here get this diameter then we're going to go ahead and come out here and then figure out this distance from here to here here to here measure or draw that out and then we'll start cutting that so I'll be right back Okay, real quickly, knucklehead over there, they refuse to be on the camera. <laughs> yeah, you know who you are. Uh, so why don't I show you the, demonstrate the way to do this without having to do a whole lot of measuring. Since I'm real bad about showing you more than one way to do things, why don't I show you the, the good old uh, Garage Mahal redneck way. Alright, so lay this on here and center it. Alright, once you do that, then you can come in here and come off your flat, do this hold it down good and tight and by the way, to be honest with you knucklehead's way over there is much quicker <laughs> but you can't always do that so when you measure this and of course, when you measure that, you want to make sure that you're using one of these Max's Grudge Mahal tape measures. These things work great, by the way. And I always come over here, and I'll find a number sort of like this, start at 2, and we'll go over to the other side, and that's going to be 1 and 8 inches. So you're not taking that much off. You're going to take off a 16th on either side. That's not a great deal. That's really the just about the thickness of your of the depth of your threads so we're going to go ahead and once again be sure to measure with your Max's Garage Mahal tape measures here work great so I'm going to turn this off I'm going to get a Dremel and we're going to cut that sucker out be right back I saw the light on the night that he walked by my window. Mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da. She was my woman. Oh, 
what you love what, what, what do you love as you can see I don't have the hole here made for you and me but I'm getting close and I'm gonna bring it in right now Alrighty, that's what she's going to look like right there. Isn't that a pretty thing? And for that earlier recording, while I was doing all that grinding, I said I was going to show you. She came off this old antique Sony digital point and shoot. Now, how do you like my foam protector, my wind protector for the little camera? Hey, let's say hello to everybody there. Let's wave at them. 
Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing wired in. And uh, that actually looks really neat right there. It's going to look like it belongs there, which is the way, in my opinion, all these things should look. Oh, check that out. There's that old Sony again. So we're going to show you that at this point. And uh, looks pretty good, guys. Alrighty, so let me shut this thing down. We're going to start doing a little wiring over here. See how we can screw that, I mean, fix that right up. Real quickly, I thought I would show you what these look like after we've covered the ends that are exposed. And let's see, there's still one or two over here that I'm doing now that need to be covered, as you can see back in there. So, that's what they look like before, this is what they look like after. And that's just a real nice, safe, covered, positive lead there. So, alright, we'll be back shortly and get some more done. Alrighty, that's what she's going to look like right there. Isn't that a pretty thing? And, for that earlier recording, while I was doing all that grinding, I said I wasn't going to show you. She came off this old antique Sony digital point and shoot. Now, how do you like my phone protector, or my wind protector for the little camera? Hey, let's say hello to everybody there. Let's wave at them. Alrighty, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing wired in. And uh, that actually looks really neat right there. It's going to look like it belongs there, which is the way, in my opinion, all these things should look. Oh, check that out. There's that old Sony again. So we're going to show you that at this point. And uh, it's pretty good, guys. Alrighty, so let me shut this thing down. We're going to start doing a little wiring over here. See how we can screw that, I mean, fix that right up. Okay, we're getting ready now to put the ends on the wire that we're going to run from the power socket to the fuse circuit. And we've decided, since we saw you last and had a wardrobe change, I did a little cleaning up, you know, that happens. So we're going to, um, we've decided to put a switch in the system so that whatever I'm operating on this power socket, whether it be a fan or a sprayer or whatever, that I don't have to look around and try to find the switch that's attached to that unit. I can just reach back and turn off the, the switch at the power socket. So that, I think, is going to be an improvement. So here's what we're going to be using. I don't have the switch over here, do I? But you know what a switch looks like. Looks like one of these things right here and we'll use I have blue for the headlights red for the tail lights have yellow for the strobing caution lights so we'll probably put a green on there for the because I have four colors blue red yellow and green I haven't used the green for anything so we'll probably put the green back there on the fender between the fused circuit and the power socket. So what we're going to do, we're only going to need about yay much wire between here and the switch. So we're going to cut this. We'll use this for something later. But we're going to shorten this because we don't need this much wire for grass to hang on and such as that. So we're going to cut this down and we're going to use some of these connectors here. So let me see if I can get you a better shot of the connectors. And I know we showed these to you yesterday on the uh, first part of the video. We're going to use some of these are going to go into the fuse panel on the other end of this wire. Instead of using these connectors here, that's better than it. Instead of using these connectors to go to the battery, we're going to use and we may use one of these for the ground probably not um, however we're going to use one of these spade connectors that'll go to the fuse circuit at the fuse panel uh, we're going to use this to go in here that'll be we'll put the male side going to the switch the female side will go to get where I can where you can see what we're doing here 
<laughs> this is all new to me and it framed this in let me back up a little bit where I can get you in here better all right we're going to use the male side going to the item we're going to power and we'll use the female side coming out of the hot side and the reason for that is then it will be if this drops down for any reason and the power is on or the fuse is intact then of course it won't short out against any of this metal and that's the idea is to make sure that you have safety in mind whenever you do these things you can do it either direction I would recommend doing this method where the female is the part coming from your power okay so we're going to use more of the heat shrink wrap we're going to use a solder paste to make sure that the soldering iron gets a good clean connection to the solder and the um, and of course the parts we're going to solder again there are various types of these connectors that we have here we have the factory protected this is a female spade clip we have the non-protected type here that you can put your own connector cover over and, and provide your own safety do that in various colors and when I use one of these depending on whether it's the hot side or the neutral or the grounding side then I will put a shrink wrap over it so that it's easily recognizable real quickly again the same thing here the difference between this female spade these two the red and the blue as well as a yellow those just denote the sizes of wire that these things fit the blue in this case fits this size wire which this is just a little 16 gauge wire is pretty small so it'll probably take up to about 10 11 amps so we'll use we're actually going to use these protected ones here but even then I'll still go ahead as I said and put a large shrink wrap over to denote hot real quickly so I'll close this thing down and I'll get some things done and we'll come back and we'll show you where we're at alrighty it's time to conclude this video and the power socket is in as you saw earlier now the switch is in and I think you might be able to see that little green light unless I've got too much light in here now let me see if I can ease this over here lean it forward see if you can see the green light yeah there you go you can see it okay so that tells us that we have power to the socket which or at least we have power to the switch so let's turn it off this oh by the way I got an email from rooster Putin that was here yesterday knucklehead as I called him saying that I really should uh, use a fan considering the fact I mentioned it maybe twice so let's put a fan on here all right fan is plugged into the power socket and now I got that through the, anyway there's your fan so I think you should be able to hear that and see that so there you go boys and girls what I did here on this on this switch for the wiring is if you come off you got a two wire here switch has three wires which one needs to go to the fuse so as I told you I put the plug in it the uh, disconnect in order to be able to disconnect the fender from the or this system here if I want to remove the fender all I have to do is disconnect that uh, connector plug two wire connector plug so the two wire connector plug one comes one of the hot wires or the hot wire comes up to the connector plug 
the ground comes up to the connector plug. Out of the connector, the opposite side of the connector plug comes over and we put that wire into and we tie the ground wire to this and to this through the single connector of the switch by utilizing a Y system and then soldering and crimping together and we did both we soldered and crimped and then we used two layers of heat shrink on it so it's pretty good shape so that's installed that's a how to there are other ways to do this this is the way I like to do it and uh, if you got something out of this video appreciate if you'd hit the like and if you haven't subscribed yet, we'd like you to subscribe if you would. Share this video and hit that notification bell on the right side of the subscribe button so that you can uh, be notified when we have the next videos coming out. And again, we really appreciate you coming by. I hope you did learn something from this or something you didn't know already. And uh, we've got more things coming up. We've got the dash that should be ready before too long. Um, and it is modified from the last dash that I had for this. So we'll be removing the factory dash. We'll be putting in the Max's Garage Mahal dash, which is more ergonomical to me. And as I mentioned in a video earlier, not in this particular video, the switch will be removed to here, which is where this, this is the tail light switch. Let's see if you can see that. I want to turn off one of the lights around, but I can't reach it. So, that's a tight switch. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, you can see it. So, that's a tight switch. Oh, wait a minute. There you go. You can see it on my hand. I'm going to put the ignition switch here. I'm going to move the choke over to here. And the throttle cable will come up and forward to here. So that as you are starting the engine, as you get to the start point, the choke should be open or closed, actually. When the engine starts, then once it fires, you just lean your hand to the right, and that'll push the choke down, which opens the uh, choke butterfly. The rest of these things all be moved forward. There'll be room for, right now this has an hour meter, and an amp volt meter which are the hour gauge is standard the amp volt meter is not that is an addition we've put in there will be room for like three or four more switches and gauges we're going to put a fuel gauge on this machine we're going to put uh, I'm not sure we're going to do engine oil temperature I'm going to put hydraulic temperatures on here and if there's enough room in the I may do an engine oil temperature. So um, I might even do an oil pressure gauge. I'm not really sure. But I do intend to do fuel gauge and hydraulic temperature gauges. So y'all come back and watch, and we'll, uh, we'll let you know as things progress. So again, we, uh, we really appreciate you coming by. Thank you for stopping by Max's Garage Mahal. Hit that like button, that subscribe, and that notification, and share by all means. And we appreciate you. Y'all come back now. You here to Max's Garage Mahal.